You know, we, I don't know how, how long we are into doing the Monday mindset. We're probably over a year, I think at this point or close to a year. Um, and, and, you know, we talk a lot about developing a positive mindset, about being resilient, about discipline, about grit, about believing the best in people, um, about how your mindset, you know, shapes everything that, that you do. And, and I think, I hope that this message hasn't been lost, but I think it's a good time to, to either, either revisit this message. Maybe, maybe, you know, you hearing it for the first time, like your mindset, it's, it's about you, right? It's not about other people. It's about looking in the mirror. It's about developing an inner peace and inner resilience and inner purpose and inner strength. Uh, and then it flows out of you, right? So a mindset isn't like a hat you put on every day. It's, 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 it's something that naturally who you are. Uh, and it's, it is a skill that you develop, but it's, you're developing it so that you can be someone who is at peace, right? When you are at peace, you are confident, you are secure, you are humble, you are focused, you are unoffendable. And, and we need that in the world. That's how we show up and bring our best to the day is only when we are at peace, right? We, we say all the time that you cannot give what you don't possess. And so you can't fake good mindset. You cannot fake strong mindset. It is an outflow of who you are. So it's about you speaking better into yourself. It's about you calling yourself up. It's about believing in who you actually are, right? It's about battling lies and believing truth. Say, no, this is who I am. I am someone who's secure. I am someone who's confident. I am someone who's worthy. I am someone who's capable. And then living that out, right? It's not just fake it till you make it type thing. It's, it is an inner strength that comes over time, that comes over practice but you have to be at peace with who you are and with where you are. And then you overflow from that, right? Your mindset is an overflow of, of your inner being. And so if you're anxious, if you're stressed, if you don't believe in yourself, if you're full of doubt, if you're full of worried, you cannot have a positive mindset. You cannot have a healthy mindset, right? And so it's, it's about consistently working on that, but, but your mindset has to be rooted in who you are. Right? It's not to say I need to go be a positive person. It's like I'm, I'm going to go out and be a positive person because positive is who I am. I'm going to go out and be resilient. I'm going to practice resilience today because resilient is who I am. I'm going to be strong and I'm going to be confident. I'm going to be secure because that's, that's who I am. You don't have to fake it. You don't have to like hype yourself up with it. It's a natural outflow of who you are at your best. And I think most of us, most people are just going throughout the day. They're going throughout their work, going throughout their relationships, and they're just simply not at peace. And so there's disconnect, there's frustration, there's bitterness, there's uh, not the right effort, there's misunderstandings. They get, they hear things the wrong way. They're having you know battles that don't need to be battles, right? When you're not at peace, small issues become large battles. It's like, man, why, why am I constantly fighting all these battles? Because like, you're because you're not at peace. And so it means you're not receiving things correctly and you're not seeing things correctly. So you don't approach them correctly. But when you are at peace, you have this perspective that allows you to see things for what they are. You know which things need more of your energy, need more of your attention and which things need less, which things to maybe like take more seriously and which things to just let kind of slide by. Right? But when you're not at peace, you're easily offended. You're insecure. You're always frustrated. Every, every critique is a criticism. So then you get defensive. It's like, that's not helping anything. That's not making anything better. But when you're at peace, you hear those things like, man, I may not agree with it, but I can consider it. I can at least trust the source, trust the person who's bringing that critique my direction and, and, and be willing to look in the mirror and say, maybe I do need to work on that. Maybe I do need to get better. And so what does it look like for you to be at peace? Right? Where do you get your peace from? What are you doing to stir up peace within you? Right? Because if, if you're paying attention to the world around you, yeah, you know, it's it, peace is not a byproduct of the world around us, right? The byproduct of the world we live in is stress and worry and fear and anxiety. It's like when you are, when that is, is what's coming out of you, think about how that, that changes the way that you speak. Think about how that impacts the way that you work, the way that you think, the way that you interact with people, the decisions that you make, right? You're making decisions out of pain, not decisions out of gain. You're making decisions out of worry, not decisions out of belief. You're making decisions out of fear and not decisions out of peace. But then think about what it looks like for you to actually show up and be a person of peace, be at peace with who you are, be at peace with things around you. That, that doesn't mean that everything is okay, right? It's not ignoring reality. It's just saying, I'm, I'm at peace knowing that knowing what I can control, knowing what I can give my effort to, 
or I can throw fits and get angry and worry about all these things, but I can't control all these things. I get to control me. And if I want things to get better, then I need to get better. But if you want your relationships to get better, you get better. Because when you get better, you're going to have better perspective. You're going to see certain decisions that need to be made because maybe that other person isn't going to get healthy. And so you have the perspective and health and peace now to pull yourself out of that unhealthy relationship. Or if you want your team to get healthier, well, that starts with you getting healthier. If you want your organization to get healthier, it starts with you getting healthier. If you want your neighborhood, it starts with you. Like everything starts as an outflow of your peace, of where you are mentally, of, of, of how you're thinking and believing and operating. So what does that look like for you? What does being at peace look like for you? How can you cultivate peace in your life? Right? I talked a lot about this idea of a morning routine. Right? Yes, I drink a cup of water, um, but I also read a little bit. Sometimes I journal. I have an identity statement that I read every single day. Right? Because what that does is it stirs up confidence in me and it recenters me to stir up peace. And I, I think I've said before, I, I started... Uh, I'm going to look to to be accurate with this. I use an app called Day One. So every day, and I started this 305 days ago, and I've missed one day. Out of 304, uh, 305 days, I've hit it 304 days where I open an app called Day One, and I just type in 10 things that I'm grateful for, right? Because I'm, when I'm grateful, I'm not stressed. I'm not worried. I'm not anxious. I'm at peace. The music that I listen to, the things that I consume, right? I, I don't consume things that don't give me peace. And we get to control what, what you consume, whether that's the news and media, whether that's social media, whether that's the people in your life, the music that you listen to, the podcasts that you listen to, the shows that you watch, right? All these things are inputs that shape our outputs. And so are you inputting things? Are you downloading things? Are you consuming things that actually stir up peace? We have to own the consequences of our actions. We have to own the consequences of the way that we show up, right? We can't just go through, go through life acting like our decisions don't, don't have an impact on us, acting like the way that we think doesn't have an impact on our actions, acting like the things that we consume don't, don't impact the things that we create. So what are you doing to stir up peace, to cultivate peace in your life and do you know what's robbing you of your peace right where, where there's a lack of peace are you clear about what's causing it and do you have a plan to get more peace in that area and we have a tool for this that i actually want to walk through we've walked through it before i'm pretty sure we have um, but i want to walk through this tool and we call it the peace index and i'm not going to go into crazy detail about this because we, we could spend a few hours on this but I think this is a really important tool. And, and personally, I, I work through this tool um, at least once a quarter, right? Just to kind of hit a reset, like, hey, where, where are you at right now? Um, and certainly if I start to feel stress building, like, like I'm out of balance, uh, I start to, I need to go back to this tool. So the peace index is ideas like how, how at peace are you, right? How at peace are you? Well, we look at it through these five circles, purpose, people, physical health provision in place. And so your purpose is like, do you know what you're here for? The purpose doesn't necessarily mean your job, right? I think we do a really bad and unhealthy job of making your purpose be the same thing as your work. It's like, that's an un unrealistic expectation. You know, let, let's say for example, that you work in um, chemical engineering. Is your purpose in life to be a chemical engineer? Probably not, it's your job. And you're probably really good at it and you should show up and work really hard at it and work with integrity and honor and create as much impact there as you can that's probably not your overall purpose right so what what is your purpose that doesn't mean you need to get paid for your purpose it's just the way that you show up the things that you do i i think that my purpose is just to help people get better now fortunately i do get paid for that that is part of my job but i would i would still have that purpose if i were flipping burgers at mcdonald's Right? I'd want every customer that came in to just have a great day and, and believe better about themselves, right? where they wouldn't just be having a burger. Like they'd walk away like, man, that was a great experience. That person really cared about me. They encouraged me. So what, what is your purpose? Do you know it? How clear are you and are you getting to live it out? Zero to 100, right? Give yourself a score for each one of these. It's going to be between zero and 100 for each score, for each circle. Um, people, how are the key relationships in your life? Right? Maybe it's your spouse or partner. Maybe it's your boss. Maybe it's your parents. Maybe it's your siblings. Maybe it's your kids. Are those key relationships at peace or are there some difficult conversations that need to happen? Is there some frustration, some bitterness, some disconnect? Uh, I think right now probably 80, 
like relationships are, are, are pretty good. My purpose, by the way, is probably 95. Um, people probably 80, 85. Most relationships, I, I, I don't really have significant stress right now in relationships in my life. Um, physical health. And we would say this is physical, mental, and personal health, right? Physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, everything that makes you healthy. How are you doing? Uh, are you overweight? Are you ill? Maybe maybe there's a cancer or some sickness. Um, maybe you have anxiety. Maybe there's certain stress, right? How, how are you doing physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually? What are you doing to take care of yourself? All right, again, this, this has become a big, a big passion of mine over the last five years in working with leaders uh, because leadership is a burden, right? That doesn't mean it's bad, but it's, it's a burden, right? You're making decisions that impact a lot of people. You're, you're, in the, you're caring for a lot of people, and that can be heavy. Well, you can't bring your best there if you're not at your best, which means you need to take care of yourself. And I notice a lot of leaders will say, oh, I want my team to take vacation. I want them to use their personal days. But if you don't, they won't. Right? You show them what matters. If you never take vacation, what you're saying without saying it is that vacation isn't acceptable. So you have to be modeling the behaviors that you want from those around you, and you have to be taking care of yourself. This is why I run. Right, Five years ago, I couldn't, I couldn't run five blocks. Now I run it usually every Saturday and Sunday. I'm not running marathons, just three to five miles, three to six miles, just to get to, to, to recharge, to rest, to refuel, to process what's going on in my life, around my life. So I try to eat a little bit better. That's why I journal and read certain things in the morning. But how, how healthy are you? Physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. Right now, uh, I'm probably healthier than I've ever been. So I'm probably about a 90, um, but that's a priority for me, right? It's not, it's, not a, it's not a strength of mine. It's a developed skill of mine. Um, provision, how are you doing financially, right? It's not, do you have what you want? Because none of us probably have what we want, but do you have what you need? Are you being paid fairly? Are you able to take, take care of, of, of yourself, your family, pay your bills, save a little bit, maybe have a vacation? I'm not talking about living an extravagant lifestyle, but do you have what you need to do the things that you need to be and want to be doing? And, and I know this last year, that became a, a, a source of stress for a lot of people, right? With, it, with COVID hitting, money became, people made, made less money. Uh, and with that too, the personal health became more of an issue during this COVID era, being, being stuck at home, not being able to interact with people, Right? That could have impacted your personal health, could have impacted your provision. Um, provision for me right now, again, things, things are pretty good, probably 85, 90. Um, place, how, where, where you live, could be your apartment, your home, your neighborhood, your city, your state, your country. Do you like where you live or is it a place of stress? And again, in COVID, this, this became a huge source of stress for people. You may have loved your home in January of 2020. But then your home became not just your home, it became your office and it became your kid's school and it became all sorts of things that you didn't anticipate and there was no break. And so now your home, your place became a place of stress instead of a place of peace. So where are you at with, with your place? Right now, mine's probably 75. We're in the midst of, of a remodel. Uh, so that's just adds, adds some stress. It's good stress, but it's still stress. So I don't know what, what that math adds up to, but I'm probably 85 to 90% overall. Let's just call it 87% is where I'm at peace right now. Uh, so the, how we would frame that is if you are between 80 and 100, we would say, would say you're doing pretty well, right? You are at peace. Keep doing the things that you're doing, right? Don't get complacent, right? Complacent is, is the enemy. Um, so don't get complacent if, if you're doing well, like, oh, I'm doing great. I need to, to sit back. And so for, for understanding where you are and to keep doing the things that are, that are giving you peace. If you're between 60 and 80, right, things are going okay, but they could be better, right? A couple, a couple of decisions, a couple of new habits, a couple trajectory changes, and you could be right, in the, right where you want to be, right, in that 80 to 100 range. Um, or a couple of things go a different way and you're below 60, you're, you're under extreme stress. So if you're between 60 and 80, you need to, you need to be aware of that and make a couple of changes to get up into that 80 to 100 range quickly. If you're below 60%, would say you're under extreme stress and you probably need to have a conversation with someone. Again, it doesn't mean everything is falling apart in your life. It just means you're aware that you're not at peace. You're aware of what's causing it. And I need to, I need to do something. I need some help to get to a better place and realize that let's say, for example, let's say you're at a 45%. Don't expect to be at an 85 or a 90 tomorrow, or maybe even in a month, right? It'll, it'll take time, but can you get to a 50? Can you get to a 55? Can you get to a 60, right? Progress is a process. 
And so identify the area that's the lowest score for you, which circles it gives you the lowest score right now, and then make an action plan to start getting better at that place. Because as, as, as your lowest circle gets better, right, your piece, your overall piece goes up. And so that's, that's the piece in this. It's just one way to think about how are you doing, right? Are you really at peace? We talk about mindset a lot. We talk about, again, being resilient and grit and being positive. Well, that's got to be an outflow of who we are. And we've got to understand what may be robbing us of that peace. Once we understand that, then we can take action. Right? And by the way, when you do this, then you start learn to multiply this into other people. Because when somebody else around you on your team and your family is like, man, I'm just struggling. Like everything's difficult. I feel, I feel like it's, everything's a battle. Say, hey, I've got a tool for you. Like I, I just went through some of this myself. You know, there's a tool that I found called the Peace Index and actually helped me realize what was what was causing the stress in my life. And I, I was able to, to develop a plan to get better. And I was like a 45 percent health. Now I'm at a 65 percent. You know, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm making progress. Maybe I can help you. Right. Because and that's the goal of all this. Right. I, I think purpose, by the way, for most people is just to make it make an impact. Right. Your purpose doesn't have to be some grand thing. It's like making making the lives of those around you better is, is really the purpose for all of us, I think. But you can't do that until you're at peace. But when you're at peace, then you can multiply that to those around you. So again, the question becomes, how at peace are you? Right? Are you living out of who you actually are? Are you living out of who other people want you to be? Like, I think we're, we are at peace when we are working and living and communicating and creating out of who we naturally are, out of who we are at our best. When we're confident in that, when we're secure in that, when there's humility in that. Say, I'm not exactly who I want to be yet, but I know who I am and I'm working towards it. Right? We lose peace when we're trying to be everything to everyone, when we're, when we're playing the comparison game, when we're worried about what they think of us right? and trying to fit into an image that somebody else wants us to be saying, no, no, I, I got to be who I am. When I'm that, that's the best version of me, which is the, which is the version that everyone actually needs. It's not about living your truth. It's just about living, living who you naturally are right? Because your truth could be very different than somebody else's truth. And when those truths start bumping up against each other, right? The world has issues, but living out of your identity, like who are you, where, when, and how are you the most at peace and how will you cultivate that into your life for the good of yourself and for the good of others? Tracy, any, any thoughts on that? Oh goodness. This is excellent. Lots of thoughts. First of all, I just downloaded day one. I'm sure that you have mentioned this before, but I've not looked at that. It's, um, it's free by the way. Yeah, it's really good. I've already, I put a little entry in there, a quick little thankfulness thing. Um, that's really great idea. So thank you for that. Um, the other thing is I have a question you mentioned at the beginning to not be easily offended. So mm -hmm. any tips on that, any tips on how to, let things slide off your off your back. It's really difficult. Uh, and, and I have I mastered this? No. Uh, am I better at it than I used to be? I sure hope so. Um, I think we and, and social media has made this worse. I, I love social media. I, I think there's a lot of good that comes from it. There's obviously a lot of bad, um, but we never have context and we think that everyone's opinion impacts us. It's like, no. It's okay to actually not respond to anything on social media. It's okay to just keep scrolling and not be offended by that. Because that what I generally see is everyone's offended about everything. It's like, that's just an exhausting way to live. And so to realize like, I don't have to agree with someone's opinion, but if I don't know them, I'm not in relationship with them. Like that's, I'm not offended. Like it doesn't matter. Their opinion does not have any impact on my life. So why should I care? You say, well, I kept, no, don't care. I don't care. I just don't have like I'm trying to remove the capacity to be offended by people's opinions. Uh, and now if they're if they're close friends, if it's family, if it's my wife, right, then you have conversation. Um, but for the rest of it, like I don't I just don't need to be offended by because there's plenty to be offended by. Right. You can find I can I could open up I could turn on the news. I could open up Twitter or Facebook and find legitimately a thousand things to be offended by today. And what I'll say is like that's going to make nothing about my day better. I can fire off an angry comment about it or tell them how wrong they are. Like that my, my truth is the truth, which by the way, your truth may be wrong, <laughs> right? Like we all have opinions. That doesn't mean we're experts. Like in your, your, your opinion may be different than their experience. And so it's, you know, we just fire off all these things that make us feel good. And then we go back to our day. I'm like, you didn't do anything yeah. like that. Didn't change anything. And, but we just, we just keep repeating the cycle of just constantly being offended by everything it's like, it doesn't, you're not making anything better. In fact, you're making yourself and others worse um, because it means you're not at peace. 
So you're always on edge. It's like, it's, it's almost as if there's a cycle, like we're looking for things to be offended by. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, just, just stop being so easily offended. Like you'll, you'll find a lot more peace and relationship and influence in your life. And, and, I, and what I didn't say, right? One of my favorite phrases from mentor mine is don't hear what I'm not saying. They're not mm -hmm. saying ignore like injustices or in, ignore right. bad things. It's not the point. You just don't have to be offended by every comment on the internet, especially those that have zero to do with you. Absolutely. It's a good word. Uh, a couple of great comments here coming in. I put him up briefly, but Margaret just reminds us that if she's not caring for herself and recharging, she loses her peace. And that is so true. Recharge is so very, very important. What do you think yeah. about that? I mean, you, you just got to make time for you. And we as a, I don't know about other cultures, as an American culture, we just don't do very well with that. Um, we make self-care seem weak. It's like mm -hmm. self-care isn't selfish. It's actually the best thing you can do for yourself and for those around you. Yeah, because if you're healthier, that you can you can be healthier for other people. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, like this is not a new phrase, but you can't pour from an empty cup. That's right. So like you you have to refill yourself. And and some of you, some of us, if that needs to be more more often than others, right? If you're if you're an introvert, you probably need to recharge a lot more often than extroverts. And and realize what that looks like. Um, and and you know, Jeremy would always say, or Steve would say, put it on your calendar, or it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, and you have to do that until it becomes a habit, right? I don't put running on my calendar. It just become a habit over the last several years. I just know. And here's another thing too. I don't know if I said this last week or two weeks ago, or just been thinking about it. Um, have habits like this in your life that aren't negotiable where you don't have to make a decision. Like I don't have to make a decision about running. I'm not mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, do I run today? Do I, I just wake up and I run. And so like to have things in your life that aren't negotiable, doesn't matter if it's, if it's snowing, right? I ran when it was minus 20 degrees. If it's a blizzard, if it's 110 degrees, I'm going to run. Um, and so to have those things in your life where you, you don't have to make a decision, it's like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. I've made one decision and that covers it for the rest of the time. Mm, that's great. Yeah. Another one here, Anthony says, I think God shakes our comfort when he wants to move us, but often our peace is disrupted too. Your comments on purpose are important for maintaining peace when today's responsibilities don't align with tomorrow's direction. Yeah, and that's that's really good. I think um, it's a great phrase like at the beginning. I, you know, comfort and peace are very different things, mm -hmm. right? We should always work to be at peace. We're probably always going to be uncomfortable, right? <laughs> If, if we're if we're pursuing like trying to unlock our potential trying to make a difference uh, and that doesn't mean you know trying to be a millionaire or what like acquire things but if you're trying to live into your purpose there's going to be discomfort if you're trying to get better there's going there should probably consistently be discomfort that's okay um, we only work through that discomfort if we are at peace All right if we're not at peace that discomfort takes us out um, when you're at peace you're like I can handle this discomfort because it's actually where I want to be because I know like this, this discomfort, this fire is what's refining me. This struggle is like what's actually building my strength and helping me if I, but I only have that perspective if I'm at peace in the midst of it. Right. Yeah. People think that everything has to be in place to be a peaceful person. And that's just circumstantial. That's not that's, yeah. that's exactly right. If, if your peace is, is based on your circumstances, you will never be at peace or you're going to have a very, very, very average life. Um, mm -hmm. where you take no risks, everything around, like you just, you live in a bubble yeah. <laughs> and that's not going to work out very well. Like you weren't made for that. And so like you get to control your peace should, should control your circumstances as opposed to your circumstances controlling your peace. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah. Some of us are taking those around us on an emotional roller coaster ride where they feel like they have to be strapped in. So that's right. um, we have to be careful about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been super helpful, very motivating. Thank you. I always love the Mondays where we can uh, kind of regroup and get our week started and headed in the right direction. And you always do that for us. So we thank you, Kevin. Thanks for all of you who took time to join us and we will see you next week. Absolutely. See you guys.